Hello to all my beautiful kings, queens, and all in between. How y'all doing today on this bubbly? Oh, that's bad. So been a long time, been a long time since I seen you guys. I uh, been busy, been very busy doing life. <laughs> So this is a little bit of a life update, a little update. Um, first, let me start off by saying that I am so, so sorry that you are going through this. Um, you is not alone. You is not the only person that has went through. Um, and it, sometimes it just happens. Unfortunately, it just happens. So... And before I get started, uh, also, don't forget to, su to subscribe if you want to. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, then give me a thumbs down, which I understand. Um, but yeah, you know, if you want to come subscribe and, you know, get to know me a little bit more, why not? And to all my other ones, hi, you know, y'all been a long time. Um, so I was pregnant, as you probably seen in my um, short video that I did. Um, after four years, we finally got pregnant. I'm going to make another video about that later. Um, probably, yeah, I'm going to make, I'll make one tomorrow about, you know, how we got there and how that happened. So, anyways, I got pregnant. We was pregnant. Um, took us four years to get pregnant. I, everything was more normal. I was, um. What is it? I was tired. Uh, my chest hurt a lot. Um, I was nauseous. I I mean, I was basically pregnant. I was very pregnant. Um, and then uh, I went to my doctor's appointment for you know, the first checkup for them to tell you, um, you know, to confirm that you are pregnant. So I gave my urine sample. Um, they checked my vitals and everything, and you, then I was able to talk to the doctor. And also on that same visit, when you get the um, the swab, you know, for down there, so they can test you for all the stuff. So it was initial, the first appointment, and that was at four weeks. That was at four weeks. Um, so I literally just missed my, my period. Um, and so all that was going fast. She was like, okay, we'll come back in like two more weeks to do an ultrasound. So I was like, okay great i'm excited let's go so um once they told us that we were pregnant i um i told my family you know i spread the word i told my family my husband told his family i we told our, our son he was really happy about it and so it was a great process and again like i was everything was going just fine i was taking my prenatal vitamins i was tired uh, I was nauseous. It was just going. It was just going how you normally would when you're pregnant. Excuse me. I'm sorry. So I went to my second appointment for my ultrasound, and that was at seven weeks. At seven weeks, I. At seven weeks on that ultrasound, I. Uh, that was sound. It was just a black hole. It was literally just a black hole. They cut the screen on. They did a vaginal um, ultrasound, and within like a second, I just knew it that because this is my second child, so I know what an ultrasound look like when you do have a fetus and when you don't. So I um, I saw it. And I was like, "Where's it at?" <laughs> and the ultrasound tech was like, "Well." let me let let me she was like hold on wait let's look and so she measured the sack and she looked around and and she was like um well you are correct there is you know normally right about this sound we are supposed to see something there's supposed to be at least a little spot or something now also before i went in there I told her, I was like, I bought a baby Doppler monitor to see if I can find the heartbeat. And I couldn't find it. She was like, oh, and you know, that's normal. Because, you know, the baby would be too small for you to get it to find, to find a heartbeat anyways. So when she did do the ultrasound 
and she, sh you know, she cut the screen on and she was doing an ultrasound. There was nothing there. It was literally just a black hole. Um, it was an empty sack. It literally looked like an empty sack. And my heart, at that moment, it didn't click to me. It didn't register. I was like, I was confused. I was lost. I was just, I was just like, what? Wait a minute, what? <laughs> So I had to, uh, so, you know, she told me to go ahead and, and get dressed and to do a, to do another sample, a urine sample, and to, you know, go sit and wait for the doctor. Now, in the midst of me waiting for the doctor, I cried. Now, if this is your first video that you looked at, it is, um, uh, the actual terminology for that particular for, for that is called a blight ovarium. Um, you can also Google it, and it tells you more. And what it basically means is that the chromosomes inside of the egg didn't form, and it is common and it happens a lot to a lot of people. Um, but at that time, I didn't know that either. So, so no, you're not alone. <laughs> I would never thought in a million years that um that could happen. Like, never thought that could be that could happen. Like, I heard of a miscarriage or something actually forming, and it's not forming. But to actually see uh like nothing on the screen, that's a whole different. That's a whole different thing. That's 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 just like to not see nothing. <laughs> And start and to start and to feel and to take a, a urine, you know, a, a, a home test to see two lines, especially after like four years of trying, and you don't see nothing when you go actually time for you to go see your baby, and there's nothing there. Yeah, it's um, that's a whole different feeling than actually like having the actual miscarriage of like okay yeah there was something there and it just didn't finish forming coming from a person that there was nothing that didn't form like nothing formed nothing at all it's just the sack it's just an empty sack so again my condolences to you um if you are watching this because you are because because it happened to you at seven weeks and this is your first time hearing about it you is not alone I'm making this video because I felt like I was alone and I looked around to see what people have to say about it and a lot of people not talking it it they talking about it but they're not so so the reason why it happens is have nothing to do with me have nothing to do with anybody it just happens it's a really common thing that it, it can happen um like it can happen and it's it's very devastating when it does happen especially when you want it to happen for so long um i do hope that you know i'm going to keep going over the story but i hope yours turns out different than mine so um as i was sitting there after the ultrasound hour while i was sitting there waiting for the doctor i cried <laughs> i cried i had to call my husband i had to call my husband and tell him that um that there's no baby, like there's literally no baby. Um, they there that there's no baby. I don't know how it is no baby, but there wasn't no baby. Um, so when I finally, so he came, you know, he came over from his job to be there with me. All that fancy, all that fancy dress. Um, we before before he came, I went to the doctor. You know, the doctor finally came and got me from the waiting room. And she was like, she, you know, she tried to comfort me in that time. And I was trying to tell her, I'm sorry that I'm crying in your office. And she was like, it's fine. Cause you know, when you go to the, when you come to the ultrasound, you're not going to like, there's not something that you want to hear. There's not something that you are going to expect to be hearing. So. She was like, it's normal, it's perfectly fine. She was like, um, well, you might be early. This might be too early 
for us to see anything, to know anything. So why don't you come back in two weeks and we'll see from there. Um, I was like, okay, that's great. We're gonna wait in two weeks to see what happens. But I was still very devastated. I was still very devastated that, excuse me, that there was no baby. Um, I went home that day, I cried, cried, and I cried. So that part is normal. Um, in a two week period, now again, this is just my situation. I, I hope it's not gonna be your situation. Um, because there is success stories out there of people actually being misdiagnosed with blight ovarium and they was and you know and they actually when they went back for their second checkup they was actually able to see a fetus or something so it is very possible for it to happen um but in my case it did not happen I waited out the two weeks and within those two weeks I still felt very pregnant I still was nauseous I was tired I had a headache from time to time um my chest still hurt it my appetite got bigger um even my stomach got bigger uh my chest got bigger shoot I got bigger <laughs> um so it was my body was doing what it was supposed to be doing, saying that it was still pregnant. I even took, uh, I know, I know this sounds crazy, but I even took a, um, you know, a pregnancy test <laughs> to see, <laughs> to see, okay? I, I, went, I went down the rabbit hole and I was still producing the hormone as I'm pregnant. Now, I also did go to the emergency room within that time within that two weeks wait because i got dizzy um i got lightheaded i almost felt like i was gonna faint one day um you know like i uh yeah i started getting headaches like there was a lot going on so i went to the emergency room everything was fine it, it, it was just i it was literally i was dehydrated is what they told me so Apparently, I wasn't drinking enough water in those two weeks of waiting, so I had just to drink it more water. I thought I was, but I had to drink more water. So, so within those two weeks, those was my symptoms. So I still felt very pregnant. I still had the hormones being produced within my body. I went back the two weeks and did an ultrasound again. Um, I wasn't able to see my doctor. I went to go see another doctor, which was great. But within my ultrasound, there was the sac got bigger and the yolk sac started to develop. But by this time, so when I went the first time, I was seven, eight, nine. I was on nine, close to 10 weeks when I went because of like the days for my for my schedule ultrasound and that's how it like planned out to be like close to it was like nine days going on to like 10 days like if i would have waited one better day i probably would have went to like 10 weeks but anyways um i went for my second well my third ultrasound no my second ultrasound i'm sorry i went to my second ultrasound and there still was the same result there was still just a empty sack like i said a little bit of the yolk sack started to develop but still no fetus pull it was still just the sack um so which i me personally i knew that i i knew in my heart that it was what it was that it wasn't going to be a baby. It was just going to be an empty sack. So I, before I went to that second ultrasound, I did some more, I did some research to see like what's the next process, what happened. Um, 
a there were a couple options that they that they could give you some options would be to see first option would be let your body um process it out let your body try to you know do what it would have to do to remove it um second one would be you could you know that there could be a pill that you can take at home to uh let it process or you could do a dnc so those were like three options that i knew that i could have done like like as in two weeks while i was waiting i did research to see what would happen after after my second or so if the baby didn't um grow so like i said the baby didn't grow so i already knew what my option was i already knew what i wanted to do so i went to go see the second so after the ultrasound, the same within like within like 30 minutes, I went to go see the doctor. The doctor was waiting on me. He was a great doctor. He was awesome. He was like, oh, what would you like to do? And I told him what I would like to do. He said, I think that would be one of the best options for you. Um, I chose to go with the DNC. Um, and I will talk about that in another video. But I decided to go with the DNC because I felt like that would be better for me and my uh you know i felt like because I, I was ready just to move on i was just ready just to get over and done with to move on to get back to i guess a regular life or just to or to try again or to not try again i was just ready to be out of limbo like just just i'm ready just to i was just ready just to keep moving on i didn't want to keep being stuck in the same boat and like hoping that my body is going to do it when i didn't think my body would do it i didn't because i never had any complications before so i was just like i don't think my body is going to process it how it sh probably should process it i think my body would just keep going carrying on so eventually it probably would get there but not as soon as i wanted to be so and i didn't want to do the second option i didn't want to do the pill because i didn't want to do it all by myself at the house. I didn't want to do that. So I just wanted to get a, D a DNC, get it over and done with to move on. So we was able to schedule my DNC on that Thursday. And so, yeah, that was that. Again, I do, um, I'm very sorry that you was going through this. But again, it's, it's not, you are not alone. I thought I was alone. I was not alone. You were just not alone. Um, during those two weeks, I was sad. I wasn't too. I mean, I was sad, but at the same time, everything happens for a reason. Maybe it just wasn't the right time for us. Um, maybe it's just basically just very not a great timing for us. I think, in my opinion. So, um, 